Hello, my name is Mike Goldhart. I'm the online coordinator here in the Southeast area. And I'm excited to be able to work with you today to be able to talk about uh, ways to improve scripture study with your students. So let me pull up my uh, PowerPoint real quick. I wanna go through a couple of things with you today. I'm gonna to use uh, some tools to be able to show some things that, that I've been really excited about. But one of the best things to understand right off the bat is when it comes to improving scripture study, it's really important to recognize that there's two parts to this. The first of which is when you're looking at your students, you're, we're going to talk specifically about that and some things to be able to, to try with your students. But you have to understand with you, too, you, you personally are probably trying to discover how to improve your personal scripture study. I'm personally trying to try to improve my scripture study. It's an ongoing process. So as you're looking through some things, I hope to be able to present some ideas and some strategies that may be able to assist. The first thing that I want to recognize is you got to have some type of assessment. You have to understand what's happening now. So the first thing I would recognize is to do an audience listening technique, which is really difficult because as members of the church, we often feel like um, I'm not studying my scriptures and so I'm guilty of, I feel like I'm not doing what I'm supposed to be doing. Uh, a lot of times in the seminary, if we pass around a, 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 a sheet that have them check mark whether they read, we have students that will just check mark because they don't want people to, to know they're not studying their scriptures. So you have to be very careful on how you assess this to be able to get accurate results, but also not to make people feel uncomfortable if they're not reading uh, or if they're struggling with their reading. So an anonymous quiz or a survey is usually really helpful for this because it lets them know that you're not interested in if they're not doing it, you're interested in what they're doing and that you're just, you're trying to discover where are you now? Have a heart to heart or a conversation with each other and let them know that it's safe to be able to share how their, their scripture reading is going um, and be very cautious and helpful for them to understand you're not really looking for a checkbox. I'm looking more for a short answer of how, how you're doing and, and what's going on. What did you learn? Then look at the maturity of your class. As you look at your maturity, you'll, you'll begin to recognize uh, there are things that are definitely going to be different. If you have a bunch of senior high school students in your class, that they're ready for some good discussions about how to improve that higher level of reading. But if they're all freshmen, they may have some real issues with some of the big words that are in the scriptures. Uh, their home life may be an issue. You may have students who have um, their purposely being um, homeschooled because they're struggling and they're not being able to be in a, a situation where they can't focus and read with, with a big peer. So discover what, what's going on with the, their, their reading level. Are they reading at a level that they can understand the scriptures? Do they need a little bit of help? Uh, and do they want to? What's the desire for them to improve in their scripture study? When you've had that kind of an assessment, this is going to be able to help you understand a little bit more about where you are so that you can help to see where you need to be. That gives a lot more foundation for you as a teacher instead of just teaching them different skills and how to underline and highlight and, and some fun things that, that may be fun to do. But if they're not ready for them, it will just confuse, frustrate or be something they ignore. So hopefully that, that's a, a tool or a skill that make, that could help. Step two is, is an obvious one to me. I think it's important to recognize that we obviously want to make sure that prayer is a big part of what we're doing. Um, I really think it's important to recognize the, the power of prayer. And so as, as you're looking then at, um, at the concepts of having prayer be a part of this, the thing that I would recognize right off the bat is look at that principle of power. You know that if you pray in faith that God's going to answer your prayers. Your students are learning that in seminary. And so make that a part of scripture study. Help them recognize that you're praying for them so that they have the ability to understand the scriptures. Make it a part of your prayer in your as a seminary class. Uh, allow them to recognize that we want to have the, the guidance of the, of the Savior. We want to rely upon the teachings and atonement of Jesus Christ. 
And this is a big part of it to be able to do so. So as you're doing that, have prayer be a part of it. I want to show a video clip that, that specifically covers this section. If there's anything I've learned about studying the scriptures, it is that what you ponder and pray about is far more important than how much ground you cover. I love that short little thought from President Oaks specifically. Prayer is a big part of scripture study. And, and to be honest, maybe that's how you start with for the first month is, hey, will you please focus on praying before you study your scriptures? That's a really good help to be able to get your students into the scriptures and to improve their experience. So then you want to start to in introduce study aids. And that's once you have an idea of what you're going to accomplish with that, you're going to, to look to see how do I make that happen? So we know that there are things that we want the students to do. Elder Scott specifically said, as you seek spiritual knowledge, search for principles. Carefully separate them from the details used to explain them. It is worth great effort to organize the truth we gather to simple statements of principle. So helping the students now to understand, we're going to go into the scriptures and we're going to pull the gems out there. Um, you may remember from the teacher training videos that we have the parable of, of the gems where the young woman's searching through the sand and she pulls different gems that she can uh, pull out of that sand. That's the most important thing to be before you, you treat, teach anything else in the scriptures is to help them understand that they're going in, they're diving into the scriptures to discover something fantastic. The other part of this then is um, I'm going to take you to our online seminary class to show there are there are ways and things that we want to accomplish. So let me share <clears throat> what we're what we have in online seminary, and the reason why I want to do that is just to kind of give you some some uh, some tools and tricks of the trade that are that are available for our online seminary teachers. Um, but I think it's very helpful for us to see what's out there. Let me share my screen. In online seminary, we added a new page, or it's a new module called Study Skills Overview. Um, so if I go into my modules, for example, in the new uh, curriculum that's been created specifically for the Southeast area, uh, our seminary teachers have access to, as soon as it pulls up, um, this section right here called the Study Skills Library. So now as you look at the Study Skill Library, the, the goal was to provide for our seminary students um, a, study st a, study, a study tool that's available for the students. They may or may not be ready for it. They may or may not use it, but we wanted to have a library so that they have something available. I would rec recognize this as a, a, in an in-person uh, seminary class is also having um, a, a tool of, or a skill of the day. As a, a seminary teacher, I would often have a skill that I would demonstrate for them to, in every single day. Today, we're going to talk about how to underline your scriptures looking for a specific principle or doctrine. Um, today we're going to use the topical guide and, or whatever it is. This is this is something that I think is is very valuable to have. Um, all of these studies tools come from God, uh, the Church of Jesus Christ .org. They're easy to discover. But I'm going to go through the overview so that you can see a little bit of what we're trying to do in online seminary that may help you in your in-person classes. So the most importantly is why and use study skills. So you can see that our goal is not to get to the end. Our goal is to gain a deeper understanding of what's taking place in the scriptures. And so our, our studying of the scriptures, we're trying to help them understand that you have a toolbox available to be able to help you to incorporate different ideas that will, will help your, your scripture study experience. Um, and most of these are because you have tools that have been given to us by divine appointed sources such as the footnotes and this guide to the scriptures bible dictionary one of the best tools that our students have really is the gospel library app on their phones as they're looking through that they have opportunities to be able to discover more 
from their scriptures than they ever have on the on the in the history of the church. And that's not by accident. Uh, I had the opportunity to uh, work with with the scripture study or the scripture um, app uh, individuals that were helping with online seminary. And one of the things that we were trying to discover is why is it so important that the students have access to all this content that's available in the gospel library? And that what we discovered is they, as they started to learn what was there, they started to be able to use all these great tools to help them understand the scriptures. But it, it took time. We had to teach them what was available. And so that's really one of the things that I wanted to do in online seminary is to be able to show them these are the tools that are out there that are available. There are trainings out there, and we can go through and help them with some things. So, for example, in online seminary, one of the things that I think is important to recognize is um, why do we use the restoration scriptures to understand the Bible? And so the, in this situation, it's a simple de definition of what's going on, what resources are available, and some examples. That's something you can incorporate into your classroom as well to try to help our students understand and, and discover uh, principles of good gospel teaching and learning um, and to be able to recognize that there are things that are available to help them. So as you're looking at um, going through your experience, so let me go back to stop share for a second. Um, when we're looking at the different tools that are available of helping our online teachers, one of the things that I would recommend that we look at then is how in the world do we, we bring these nuggets into our class? And that's, that's one of the things that I think that President Nelson taught well. So let me show you an example of what President Nelson did a few years ago um, for all of the church. Let me share my screen really quick. So if you remember, President Nelson gave a challenge um, where he asked the church or the young adults in the church to go through all of the topical guide and to be able to underline everything about Jesus Christ, to study Jesus Christ. And so he became an example of using a study skill. This is a, a picture of his scriptures that we took. And so if you look at... The, this is, so Jesus Christ is the topical guide. Uh, he went through and he would just mark that he had studied the scriptures and he would underline things that were important. So now you have a prophet or a president of the church, a prophet, seer and revelator, who is looking at different ways to be able to discover more about Jesus Christ using the tools in the scriptures. But what else I love about this is he becomes the simple example. So his challenge for us to learn about Jesus Christ became something that I can use in my own personal scripture study. So I can look at President Nelson as an example. So a recommendation that I, that I would give to you as seminary teachers is what examples, what are you doing in your personal scripture study that you can be able to share with your students as an idea of, hey, in my scripture study last night, I, I really had fun underlining this section. Um, sometimes it's really good to help our teach our students know is I could not understand this word. And so I had to go to a dictionary and I had to look this word up and I found that this word means this. Uh, letting your students know that it's okay that there are big words in the scriptures and that you need help to be able to find them. Um, so that's that's another example that I would give for for scripture study. Then the last thing that I would rec recommend for our scripture study is to recognize that your class is a lab. And so I would encourage these three questions. What can you practice in your class? What needs to change? And what did you discover? If, as you're going through that, you become a coach and your students are your players. And as you're starting to practice different scripture study skills in the class, you can begin to recognize, okay, we're going to focus on learning how to use the Bible dictionary to understand some of the, the, the concepts that are hard to, to cover in this section of the scriptures. Let's practice that so that you're giving your students tools to be able to use at home and on their own. 
Uh, you'll maybe find that there are, there are things that you need to change. For example, maybe your students are, are young freshmen and using the Bible dictionary isn't helpful at all because the Bible dictionary is also using really tough words. And so you have to look and discover um, back to the assessment. What does, my, what, what does your students need to be able to understand the scriptures? What do you need to change to make it even more simple? And then also, and most importantly, is what did you discover? I know that the Savior is going to be a very active participant in your class. I know that the Savior is going to be someone who's going to help you as you rely on his teachings and his atonement. You'll discover that there will be miracles take place in your class. Celebrate those miracles. Help others know that those miracles have occurred. As uh, for uh, to, to give you an example, as a, a ninth grade seminary teacher, I had a young woman who really struggled with reading. Uh, we'll call her name Sally. Sally would was very open with me at the beginning of the school year when she was talking about me. She said, "I I can't read very well. I struggle with reading. Please don't call on me." And so that was um, honored. I made sure I didn't call on her in class. But that also became something that was a good challenge for me because I knew if she's having a struggle with reading, then having her try to read the scripture block for class is going to be a challenge for her because she also is a student and she has seven other classes that she's trying to succeed in. And if reading's a challenge, she's probably taking a lot of time. So as we we talked back and forth and, and I reached out to her mom and asked how can I help her scripture study it was a it was a big concern for her mom it was a big concern for her family how do we help Sally gain a testimony of Jesus Christ in the scriptures and and at that time the uh, the iPods were just barely coming out uh, with the scriptures on them and so we tried it and we asked her to, to just listen to the scriptures as she was reading it's a super simple study skill of, of listening as you're reading. It's a reading skill. And we thought, well, let's see what happens. It was life-changing for her because it was helping her to understand what she was reading. But what I didn't understand is that simple skill that was, it was truly an inspiration from the Lord to be able to suggest it because it wasn't something I had ever done before. But it translated into her other classwork and she began to improve her reading because of her Book of Mormon study that year. And so there are little, little things that you can celebrate and, and be able to recognize that the Savior is helping you to discover ways to help your students to learn and to be in the scriptures. So practice, discover, try, change, figure out ways that will improve and know that you're always going to be changing and always going to be learning and always going to be discovering. Uh, because just like the Lord teaches us line upon line and precept upon precept, He's going to teach you as a teacher of line upon line, precept upon precept of things that will, will improve your class every single day. Um, I love that reality. And I hope that you've been able to learn some things that you want to try and to be able to apply some simple ways to improve your scripture study. Your best friend for learning on ways to improve scripture study is churchofjesuschrist.org. I would just simply go in and, and, and type in scripture study in there, and you'll have a list of different ideas and topics that you can study and, and try and learn from to be able to help your class. I bear you testimony that Jesus Christ is truly involved in the lives of our students and in, in your life as a teacher. And I promise as you go through your different experiences as a teacher, you will discover things that your students need now. Look for those miracles daily and discover the ways that the Savior is going to be a part of what you're accomplishing. And I say that in the name of Jesus Christ, amen.